Alien Romulus story is happening between the first Alien movie which was released in 1979 and the second one released in 1986. I watched the movie on an IMX screen with full concentration even though I slept very little last night. The co-screenwriter and director of the movie is Fede Alvarez. This name will be familiar to some of you who love horror movies. I think Fede Alvarez handled this movie very well. By the way, I'll give information about the chronological order of Alien movies in a moment. This movie, Alien Romulus, is the fourth movie in that chronological order and continues the alien series tradition of using mythological names or places. In mythology, Romulus and his brother Remus are the founders of the city of Rome. Here in this movie, Romulus is the name of a space station. This space station is discovered abandoned near a mining planet. The discoverers are a group of young people working in the mine, and they actually want to escape from this planet that never sees the sun. They need the sleeping pods on the space station to escape, because the planet they want to go to is 9 years away, and they lock into that space station with their own spaceship and start making their way through the huge dark claustrophobic structure to remove the sleeping pods. There, they encounter the most terrifying life form ever recorded. This is the framework of the story. But of course, as you may guess, there are surprises. I was especially surprised by a character who appeared in the first movie released in 1979 and suddenly appears in this movie as well. Here I need to emphasize something about the Romulus space station. This station belongs to the Wayland company, which aims to complete the project called Prometheus. Wayland is a company that plays a leading role in the main story of Alien, starting with the Prometheus movie. In the non-stop action structure of the movie, tension and fear rise from time to time. The bond of friendship between six young people, their occasional conflicts, but most importantly, their struggles with the alien creature constitute the main structure of the movie. I must emphasize that one of these six young people is a very special android. Let's take a short break here, because there are people who have watched the entire Alien series and there are those who haven't watched it at all. Therefore, let me give you a brief information about the chronological order of Alien story. I can never forget that I watched Alien in Istanbul in 1979 which was directed by Ridley Scott. In this movie, one of the scientists team that lands on a distant planet to do research brings a very scary monster with him to the spaceship. But how did he do that? Maybe you haven't watched this movie so I don't want to spoil any surprises. But personally I can say that this is my most favorite movie of the Alien series. The movie released this week is the seventh Alien movie. Now, before talking about this movie, I'd like to list the seven movies chronologically according to the Alien story. In other words, not according to the shooting years, but according to the flow of the story. The beginning of the story among these seven movies is the movie Prometheus, directed by Ridley Scott in 2012. However, a short movie was also released in preparation for this movie. That short movie was directed by Ridley Scott's son, Luke Scott. In this short movie, Peter Valent, CEO of the company behind the spaceship in the Prometheus movie, talks about the Prometheus story and the elevation of a man to a godlike status at a conference. After this short movie, I recommend you to watch the movie Prometheus. Chronologically, the second movie in the Alien story is Alien Covenant, also directed by Ridley Scott, which was released in 2017. And in the third place in the chronological story, there is Alien, directed by Ridley Scott in 1979, which is the first movie 45 years ago where we met Alien. And we come to the fourth movie in the chronological order. The movie released this week, Alien Romulus. So Alien fans should know that the movie they will watch this week is the story that comes after the Alien story that we watched 45 years ago. And the fifth movie is Aliens, directed by James Cameron in 1986. Alan Ripley, the character played by Sigourney Weaver in this movie Aliens, is here for the second time because we met her in the first movie. And the movie in the sixth place in the story flow is Alien 3, directed by David Fincher in 1992. Director David Fincher plays the story of this movie as realistic as possible. The last movie in the story is Alien Resurrection, made in 1997, featuring Alan Ripley's clone named Ripley 8, directed by French director Jean-Pierre Jeunet. 
I hope this chronological order will be useful for those who have not watched any movies from the Alien series. Apart from these seven movies, there are two more movies featuring Alien. One of them is Alien vs Predator, shot in 2004 and directed by Paul Anderson. The other one is Alien vs Predator Requiem, which was directed by Colin and Greg Strauss brothers in 2007. These two are the movies called crossovers, where Alien faces another character. After sharing this, let's talk about the success of the director Fede Alvarez. First of all, the director Fede Alvarez puts us in a very realistic environment, with extremely accurate lighting of the depth of space, the planet which has an asteroid belt, the space station and spaceship. As you may guess, light sources set in space and their use are extremely important in science fiction movies. We start the story on the planet used as a mining colony. At the very beginning, we understand very well why these young people want to leave the atmosphere of this planet which is in the dark environment with no sun. And then they struggle with the same darkness in the space station they go to. And director Fede Alvarez, together with his cinematographer, reflects this extremely realistically. The asteroid belt surrounding the planet, the space station close to the asteroid belt, and the location of the six young people's spaceship were planned extremely accurately and the director distributed the tension very equally among these three elements. Because it's definite that the space station will crash into the asteroid belt and the time for young people is very short. So when you watch this movie, you'll definitely witness the tension and the fear coming towards you. Because the space station turns into a complete trap. And in this trap, on one hand, there is the danger of being destroyed by the asteroid belt and on the other hand, there is an effort to deal with the alien and bring the sleeping pods to the ship in a limited time. I actually gave you some minor spoilers, but these minor spoilers are nothing. The real surprises will come your way when you go to the movie. The designer of the creature form in the Alien series is the Swiss artist named Hans Rudi Giger, who passed away at the age of 74. And the museum where his works are exhibited is open to visitors in Switzerland. In each movie, his basic design is further developed and detailed. In this movie, you'll see how much his design has been improved, especially in the surprise at the end. As a result, the seventh Alien Romulus movie directed by Fede Alvarez is very successful. And the success of this movie is approved by Ridley Scott as well, who is the producer of this movie. Before I finish, I'd like to mention the two scriptwriters of Alien, Dan O'Bannon, who is no longer with us today, and 89-year-old Ronald Shusett. Please watch this movie in a theater where the image and sound quality system is good enough.